Good morning. Welcome back to my channel. All right, what's next? Uh, today, we're gonna work on making the blanks for 3D waving flags like that one up there. Uh, we're not gonna do the entire flag. Uh, I'm gonna put links down in the uh, description below that uh, for the videos that I did when I made that flag originally. Uh, the first video will be how I made the blank, the pre-grinding the shit out of it. You know, it's just gonna be the two by fours glued together, how I got to that stage. That's what the first video will be in the description. The second one is the one you wanna watch after this one. It's going to be uh, how I actually finished it, where I ground it down, sanded it, uh, put the stain on the stripes, made the union, carved the stars out, all of that good shit. We're not gonna do any of the carving on this video. We're not gonna stain anything. It's just about making a blank. And the reason why I'm doing this video again is to save lumber. As my first video, it took, uh, I had to buy seven two by fours. I used six and a half two by fours to get two flags. So I'd have a four foot section of two by four left over after making them. I am going to use five two by fours for these two flags. I'll actually end up using four and a third uh, two by fours. So I'll still have a six foot, five foot section of uh, two by four left over. Now your standard off the shelf construction grade two by four, it's 96 inches long. The flag that I make are 30 inches. You can make them bigger, you can make them smaller. I don't know how, it's math. You're gonna have to do the math to figure out the thickness of the stripes uh, in conjunction to how big the union is gonna be. Then you're gonna have to figure out where to get the, the union stencil. Uh, my union stencil I got off of eBay from an eBay seller named uh, Stencils by Joni, I believe it was. And when I first started making these things, I ended up buying, I think, four different stencils before I got one that fit properly and looks Yeah, so here's all the stencils that I had originally bought and none of them actually fit properly. So it was a trial and error and it got a little expensive because they're like $15 per stencil. And I finally got one that was the right size. So I'm not gonna change the dimension of my flag because I've already got it dialed in to a 30 inch flag. With a 30 inch flag, we need to make these two by fours, one and a quarter inches. From the store, they're one and a half inches. So we gotta run them through a planer plane them down to uh, an inch and a quarter because each one of the two by fours will be a stripe once we glue them together. Now since these things are 96 inches, I'm going to cut it into three individual pieces. I'm going to cut them at 32 inches. Now I'm going to do 32 inches because if you've ever used these uh, bench top uh, face planers, when you run them through, you get what's called uh, snipe. You get a little bit of it at the front, but it's pretty pretty fucking minimal at the front of the flag or at the front of the uh, the cut it's at the trailing end when it leaves the planer and uh, it drops off with the one roller and the board always kicks just a little bit and you'll get a groove a chunk taken out it takes a little snipe out of the end of the board so I'm thinking I have two inches extra on the end of it I can just whack that off down to my 30 inches and cut that snipe off then I don't then I got a nice seamless freaking stripe to put up on there uh, and the reason why we're trying to do this to reduce the amount of two by fours that we use because lumber is expensive. It's, con it's come down considerably in price than it, than it was, what, six months ago? Like, you know, back during the summer when a two by four was worth more than a fucking bar of gold. But they're still expensive. And the more money that you can save on lumber, the more beer you can buy to drink while you're out here like, playing with power saws. All right, so now that I have told you what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut these into freaking pieces, 32 inches, and then I'm gonna run through the face planer. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna waste your time and bore you showing you how to take these things and cut them into three individual pieces. And I'm also not gonna show you how to run them through the uh, face planer. If you wanna see that riveting freaking amount of uh, uh, video, you can watch my first video that I made on flags. I'll show you the planer that I use and talk about it real quick. But beyond that, 
I'm gonna shut the camera off, crank my fucking stereo back up because this goes a lot quicker if you can listen to a Slipknot really loud when you're doing all this work. All right, can you see me? This is the Ryobi freaking uh, face planner. You stick the board in this side, there is a uh, set of knives in there spinning really fast. It's got rollers that feeds the board through, kicks it out this side. You got an out feed or an out, uh, all the chips come out on this end where I have this big plastic bag. So I'm, normally I hook my shop vac up to it. This time I'm just gonna have a plastic bag here to catch it all. And then we can take the, uh, the shavings out and uh, put them down on the, uh, the stall floors and that for the animals to piss on and it's easier to clean up the stalls. And then we don't have to go buy as much, uh, many shavings from uh, Tractor Supply. Uh, to use it, you just basically stick your board in here and you crank, keep cranking up on this thing until it raises up to the board will go in and then you lower it down slightly to where the roller to grab it. Flip it on and it'll grab the board, it'll feed it through, take it out, bring it back over to this side, turn the dial just a little bit, about a half a turn, that'll drop the, that'll drop the level down, run it through and you keep doing that over and over and over again. It's got an indicator on this side Right now it's set at freaking an inch and a half, which is what the thickness of that two by four is. We have to keep grinding it down at approximately a sixteenth of an inch ish each pass until we get it down to an inch and a quarter. Once we get it down to an inch and a quarter, then we're good. We set that one off. We do the next one over and over and over again. This thing's extremely loud. This is kind of a time consuming, boring process. So once I have all the boards cut, I have them all fucking plain down to the thickness that I want. I'll turn the camera back on and we'll do the next step. All right, so I got all 13 uh, future stripes milled down to their, uh, their necessary thickness. Now, I don't know, let's see if I can show this on camera or not. Let's see, will it focus? And if you can see right in there, it's nice and tight line right there, but then right here, you've got that gap that is caused from that freaking snipe now the problem is this is actually two and a quarter inches to the end of the snipe so my 30 inch flag is actually going to be 29 three quarter inches taint no big deal it's fuck quarter inch ain't gonna hurt nothing so now i gotta go through and cut all of them uh sniped ends off the the leading end has some but it's pretty minimal. It's almost not noticeable. Uh, when you put the boards together, it's that trailing end that's the worst. Okay, all the boards are now cut to length. Uh, they're not perfect, they're slightly off. Once I get uh, these things all cut through the bandsaw, I get the blanks glued up, they're all dried, then I can flip them over and I can take a skill saw and I can true up the ends and just remove just a freaking hair to make sure both ends are perfectly true. Oop, lay that tab down, sticks you in the nose. Ah, so in steps, the trusty bush light box. I keep some of these around, not because I'm lazy and don't fucking carry them up to the house when they're empty, it's because they make great pattern material. Gotta open them up. We need to cut this box up and we're gonna make a pattern. Tape it together. Use a uh, painter's tape because you can draw on painter's tape. If you see here, I don't know, can you see here? Yeah. Uh, this bottom uh, stripe has got basically two peaks, the middle of a valley, and the slight start of another peak. That is going to be what we're going to base our pattern off of. Now, we can do this one of two ways. Uh, we could do 13 separate patterns for these boards. I don't want to do that. I'm going to make one pattern and I'm going to adjust it slightly and freehand in the extra. So the first thing we got to do is determine kind of 
how we want this. It's got to have two freaking peaks in it. We're going to start off midpoint, midpoint. Let's just kind of rough sketch out our midline like that. We want our first peak is going to be, let's see, somewhere right in there. And our second peak, somewhere right about there. It means that this will be a valley down here. carefully <laughs> all right there's one now we got to do 12 more of these. So what we're going to do, we are going to hash this thing off. We want to come over. Let's bring it over an inch and a quarter. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Now we're going to go board number two, which means we bring it out to this hash line right here, get it all lined up. that and then we can just bring our pattern down actually since our pattern ain't really fucking symmetrical what we're gonna do is just kind of freehand her out then we'll go to line number two line number three Okay, <clears throat> that is all the patterns lined out. We're not necessarily going to cut directly on these lines. They are going to be a reference point because most of these flags, we're just gonna freehand this shit because once it's all glued together, uh, we're gonna take a grinder to it. We're gonna grind the hell out of it. So I'm gonna kinda That one I like. Cause it's got some decent meat to the that one's pretty good this one freaking drops down a little too much so we're gonna raise it up and we're just gonna kind of follow this pattern a little higher Okay, all the lines are on there. Uh, now I gotta cut them all out on the freaking bandsaw. So I'll shut the camera off and get back to this later. All right, got them all freaking cut out on the bandsaw, laid out, two freaking blanks, four and a third two by fours. They've got a nice wave pattern to it. Yeah, I know, it looks rough. Uh, I don't have them glued up yet. I'm not gonna glue them up on this video because that fucking takes time. But with the nice, it's got the, the lines going this way, this way everything is flowing. Uh, it'll be easy to refine this shape with 
the grinder. But we'll glue it up. What we're gonna do, when we glue it up, I use Tight Bond 3. Now this isn't a Tight Bond 3 freaking bottle. This is the glue bot. Uh, I like the glue bot just because it's got this nice silicone cap, fucking seals up. All of my freaking bottles that I buy from the store, it's got that pop-up thing. They always break and freaking then my glue starts to dry out. So I put my glue into the glue bot. I'll put a link down below where you can get the freaking glue bot off of Amazon. It'll be a, uh, an affiliate link. Uh, with an affiliate link, if you click on it and buy something off of that link, uh, I get part of Jeff Bezos' freaking profit profits because he doesn't need another rocket ship and I could use a little extra money to pay for lumber and other materials to do shit like this. So any of the links that are down below other than my video links will be affiliate links. Go ahead and click on them, buy shit, help the channel out. Uh, I use Type Bond 3 for this because it has a very long work time. Uh, all the Type Bond glues are fucking really good. This isn't sponsored, but Type Bond 3 is my favorite. For one thing, it's water resistant, it's food safe, so you can use it on cutting boards and shit like that. But I like the fact that I can glue this entire thing up and the glue hasn't set. If you use like Type Bond 1, by the time you've got the second board, the glue's already setting up. It's hard to fucking glue up a huge area like this. So Type Bond 3 is the way, the way to go with a, a project like this. I'm sure there's other glues out there that have the same properties with the, the setup times and that, but that's the one that I particularly use. Once again, I will have the links down below on how to finish these flags. To finish them, you're gonna need something akin to this. They have different freaking things, uh, different companies make them. This is the one that I use. Uh, as you can see, it's been fairly well used. It's full of a lot of sawdust. This is the Cuts All Extreme four and a half inch angle grinding disc. This thing will remove shitloads of fucking wood fast. This will refine our shape and get us down to where we want it rather than having all of these fucking sharp lines. Once you've got it refined down to the shape that you like, get yourself some sanding discs for your angle grinder. They're about the best way that I've found to sand these things. The only problem that I have is when you get into the finer grits, uh, they burn really easy. So you gotta be real careful when you're sanding because it will leave all kinds of burn marks. I'm not real happy with doing it like that. Uh, I end up having to do some sand, hand sanding to get rid of some of the burn marks. Uh, this one's lost its sticker, so I'm not sure what grit that is, and it needs to be replaced anyways. But once I get into the sanding, I usually start off with the uh, 36 grit, and then I'll bump up to, that's probably my 80 grit, because here's my 120 one. As I go 36, then I go 80, then 120, and I call it good at 120, and we're gonna put a, a, a heavy amount of uh, urethane on here. Uh, do some hand sanding afterwards to kind of smooth it off, get rid of any splinters and shit like that. But you gotta be careful with the higher grits, which I've gotta replace, because it will burn. But anyways, there we go. I just saved freaking uh, two and a half, roughly, two by fours to get the same result that I was doing before. I think I like doing it the way I was doing it before because it's a little easier and I got a better consistent wave pattern. But this turned out just good enough that, uh, yeah, I'll be able to make a nice looking flag. It'll look just like that when I'm done. Uh, I'll take a picture of it and freaking link it to the, uh, or I might even use it as a thumbnail, fuck, I don't know. Anyways, watch the videos down below if you want to see how I finish it. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. Click on the links. Buy shit. Give me money. Hit that like button. See you next time, guys.